Hello, welcome to a very special guest tutorial on the coding train. I don't have my train whistle, oh well. Um, this guest tutorial is going to be about the Connect, this Connect 2. So this tutorial is designed, does it work with also the Connect 1? No, only the Connect 2. And uh, the guest that I have to present about the Connect 2 and this project called Connectron is Lisa Jampori. Now Lisa is a uh, graduate of ITP, the program where I teach. She's also a researcher there, she's an artist. Uh, there will be links to more information about her work and her website in this video's description. Uh, most of her research is around the body and movement and gesture and all the kinds of things that you can do with this Connect. And this is uh, her open source project called the Connectron, originally developed, started with Sean Van Every, who also uh, uh, teaches here at ITP. And Lisa has been working on this project for Two years. Two years now, <laughs> and it's going to talk to give you an overview of how it works and I'll write a little bit of code in P5. Um, it's open source. If you're interested in contributing, um, more information about that in the video's description. And also, Lisa is currently researching what other types of depth sensors might work well with this Connectron software, given that the mic Microsoft is no longer making this thing. But you can still buy them, and you can still use them. We have a closet full of them downstairs. <laughs> OK, so I hope you enjoy this uh, guest tutorial from Lisa. And uh, again, all the information in the video description. And if you have any questions, ask them in the comments. Thanks so much. Well, thank you so much, Dan, for having me. It's really an honor to be here today on the coding train to talk with everyone about Connectron. Connectron is a open source tool to bring Connect data from the Connect V2 onto or into the browser. So you can work with it in your favorite creative coding libraries like P5.js and 3.js and all of the other things that you love to work with in the browser. So I think a great place to start is just to get a basic understanding of how Connectron works. And so for that, I'm going to hop over to the whiteboard. So if you've worked with a Connect before, you and if you haven't, that's completely great also. But if you have worked with one before, you're probably used to this type of setup where you have your computer. And then you have um, a USB 3 cable connected to your connect, right? And, um, and since the connect SDK is just available on Windows, this would be a Windows computer or a PC. And, um, and so once you have this connected and you're running whatever software you're used to running to get connect data, then you have your live connect data coming um, onto your screen from your connect. Right? And then you have access to all these great things with the Connect. The, um, the Connect 2 gets, let's see, where is a good place to write? I'll write over here. We get six um, 25 bone skeletons. Uh, we get an RGB feed at 1920, 1080, and also a depth feed, which is um, 512 by 424. And then an infrared feed as well, which is the same resolution as the depth. So this one little camera gives, just, gives us all this great stuff, which you get on your PC. So that's the typical setup. What Connectron does is um, it takes this data and it broadcasts it out over the internet. So, so let's imagine we have this setup, but now we open the um, Connectron server, right? So this is now running the Connectron server. And now this is all being broadcast out. So let's see, like this, right? And that's working over something called WebRTC, which is just a um, a group of protocols that allow you to send uh, live data over the internet. So now you can have another computer over here that can listen and can listen to the information that's coming over the network from the Connectron server. So this computer is now running the Connectron API. which is just a JavaScript library that you run in your browser. So you run it in something like Google Chrome. And because it's running in the browser and, it's, and you don't actually have the connect com 
connected to this computer, this can actually be a Mac or a PC. And then in real time, it can just listen for that information and draw the connect data here at the same time. So that's sort of the very, very basic part of Connectron, but then what's really exciting is this is actually uh, two-way communication. WebRTC allows for um, data to go both directions. So this computer actually has the ability to talk back and forth with the Connectron server. So now this computer can get the, get the data from the Connect and display it, but it can also change, like ask for different things from the Connect or control the Connect over the, um, over the connection. So for example, maybe right now it's streaming the body data, the skeleton data, but this computer can say to this connect over distance, you know what, I don't want the body anymore, give me the RGB, or maybe it doesn't want that anymore, maybe it wants the depth feed. So it becomes in a way like a remote control for this connect, right? And so this connect may be Let's say this one is in New York City, and this one's in LA. This computer in LA that's not even connected to the Connect can be controlling it across the country in real time. And then what gets really exciting is that you can then actually have a second computer running the Connectron API, and this one can also be receiving data and displaying data in real time, and it also has two-way communication and could be controlling that connect in real time. And this one, you know, this one doesn't have to be in LA, maybe this one's in San Fran. And then maybe you have one more, let's see if you can see it down here, but you have one more, and maybe this one, also connected, is in Chicago. Or let's go to Europe, maybe this one's in Berlin. Right, so now we have a number of different computers that have access to this connect around the world and they're able to get real-time data from that connect. And then we can get really crazy and we can add in one more element, which is another PC. This one is connected over USB, USB 3 to another connect, and this one is running the Connectron server as well. So this one will be Connectron server number two, and so this one's number one, right? And so we have this other Connectron over here, and maybe this one is in Shanghai. And this one can then broadcast out its signal as well. And this computer can also be listening for this server. So now we have the connect data from two different connects in two different locations in the same browser. And this again is two-way communication. So this computer which is in LA, which is running the Connectron API on a Mac, can actually control these two different connects that are across the globe, one in New York City and one in Shanghai. And then of course these other users or coders here in San Francisco and Berlin can connect into this one as well. Okay, so now I'm over here uh, with my PC and I'll just switch to the overhead view real quick so you can see I have my connect and it's the V2, the Xbox Connect, and it's connected just by a USB here, yeah, USB over here to my computer, so really simple. So um, now I'm going to come to the Connectron website, which is just connectron.github.io, and go to getting started, which explains how to set up the server, and uh, then what you would do at home if you're doing, if you're following along, is you would download this preview release, which brings you over to GitHub where you have a zip file to download. I've already downloaded it, 
and opened the zip file. And inside, there's this Connectron application. So I'll double click on that. Then I'll scoot it over here. And so now Connectron is running. And I have access to all of the feeds coming from the Connect. So there's Dan. Looking at my email. No, I'm totally listening. OK. Um, <laughs> so you get a color feed. Um, then there's also the depth feed, which uh, this is a 8-bit um, depth. And whatever's closer to the camera is darker. And whatever is farther away from the camera is um, lighter. And then there's actually a raw depth feed as well. And this is a 13-bit depth. So this is the full resolution of the depth that, um, that the Kinect can see. And then we have the uh, tracked bodies. So this is the skeleton um, that this is kind of like the bread and butter of Kinect. It has this amazing ability to pull out the joints <laughs> of, um, of a person into 25 joints. And it can find six people at once. So I'm going to click over here to all bodies. And you'll see it's actually showing the same exact thing. So the Kinect can see six different bodies at the same time. And those are all piled together in one JSON object. But um, sometimes you want all six of those bodies. And sometimes you just want the single bodies that are being tracked by the Kinect. And so that's what this um, tracked bodies option gives you. Then the last things on here are the infrared. Kind of does fun things with glasses. <laughs> the long exposure <laughs> infrared, which is just a slightly more exposed infrared. And then the key feed, which uh, this feed actually cuts out the RGB color of a body from the background. This works like very well also when you have like a curtain or something in the back so it really cuts out the back but it's working pretty well here so then you can do fun things where you can layer a person in different scenes and stuff online and then the last feed here is RGBD and this one is actually taking the RGB feed and it's mixing in the the depth as the alpha channel so you can actually get both depth and color at the same time in one image amazing so we'll go back to the skeleton. And then just real quick, I, I wanted to walk you through the advanced options. Oh, and I can't forget, there's a record button here. So you can record uh, data coming in, whether it's skeleton data or the image data, depth data, and replay it back on your website later on if you don't want to be working with live data. So here under advanced options, uh, there's a a field here to be able to enter in your own peer server. So Connect works over PeerJS. And by default, it sets up a connection on your local network, which is what we'll work on today. But if you wanted to go out onto the World Wide Web and be able to work across continents like we were looking at on the whiteboard, you would need to actually set up a peer server, which is pretty straightforward. But I'm not going to be able to go over it today because well, I just don't have enough time, but that's where you would enter that information in. Then you can also change the sizes of your images in case you want them bigger or smaller or need to make them smaller for your bandwidth or whatever. And then finally, there's an option here to block API calls. So when we were looking at the whiteboard board before, well, maybe I can actually hop over there real quick. Back over here at the whiteboard, <laughs> you might remember we were talking about how all of these computers have the ability to have two-way communication between the, the Connect and, um, and the API. So that means that anybody who's listening to the Connect can also be requesting things of the, of the Connect on server. So that's awesome, but you may not want everybody, like the person in LA and the person in San Francisco and the person in Berlin, to all be able to make requests to your server at the same time. You know, imagine if this one wants the skeleton, wants the bodies, this one wants the depth feed, and this one wants the RGB feed, you're probably going to run into a little bit of an issue. So that's what the block API calls is for. If you just want to broadcast and you don't want anybody to be able to 
really access your connect and make any changes to it from abroad, you can just block them by hitting this button or re-allow them by hitting that button again. So that's everything here on the server side. And once this is up and running, you can just walk away and program from another computer. And that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to switch over to my Mac and I'm going to program on top of this. Okay, so I'm back and I'm here now on my Mac. I've left my Kinect plugged into my PC, which is running the Kinectron server, and that data is now being sent over my local network here at ITP. And uh, so I'm going to now program in the P5 Alpha editor. And to start, I just I opened up a new project here at alpha.editorp5js.org, and I'm going to head over to the Connectron documentation site and in the API getting started, I'll just grab the, the library reference to be able to include it here in my index file. So I just cut and paste it here and now I have the Connectron API included in my code. So I'll head back over to sketch.js and I'll start by saying, by just creating a Connectron variable. And then in my setup, I'll make my Connectron a new Connectron. Now just a note here, uh, the Connectron will actually, if I were coding on the same exact computer where my server is attached, if I just declare the Connectron like this with no IP address in it, it'll automatically connect to my, um, to the server that's running on the same computer. But because they're running on two different computers, I need to put the IP address here of my, um, my Connectron server. So that is, Can read you? <laughs> sure, <laughs> 172. Yeah. 16. Yep. Dot 216. One six. Dot 218. 218. Dot dot two five one. This probably won't be running when people are watching this to connect to it, I suppose. Right? No, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> You'll have to set up your own. Or maybe I'll set up one for you to connect to and put it in the put it in the um, comments for you. But um, so and this is the number that's right at the top of your connectron when you open it. Let's see, actually I can show you here. It'll be this number here at the top of your connectron server when you open it up. So you just take that number and you put it here in quotes in your new connectron and then you make a connection to that server. So connectron dot make connection and now we're connected. Then the last thing that I need to do is ask for a feed and so for this I'm going to ask for tracked bodies. So I say connectron start tracked bodies and then I'm going to tell my program what to do with that connect data once it receives it. And so for this, I'll say draw body. And I'll write that function down here, which is draw body. And then the data that comes in will come in as a body. So let's just make sure that this is working before we go any farther. Oh console body, no, console log. <laughs> and we're just going to say here just to make sure it's working. So let's see, I'll hit play. And if you can see down here in my console, let's see, I'm getting here, 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 here. Can we see that? Yeah. So, uh, so this tells us that we are receiving data and it's running that function every time that the data comes in from the server. So that's great. I now know that I'm getting my Connectron data. And so now I just need to do something with it. So I'll do that by creating a for loop to go through all of the joints in the body and draw them to the screen. So I'll create a simple for loop. I is less than body.joints, which is the array of uh, joints on each skeleton and the length of that. And then I++, plus plus, so iterating through all 25 joints. And then I'm going to draw a circle uh, for each of those joints. 
and I'll put it at depth x and depth y. And then I'll make it uh, 10 by 10. Great. And we'll make those red for now. Great. So we'll run that. And Chippen, can I make you oh, yes. dance around in front of my camera? <laughs> Let's see. Is it getting you? Yes. Great. So it's working, but we have one problem. We're drawing a background over top of, of Schiffman, so we're not going to be able to see him. So we need to move the background here, actually. And then the other thing that we need to do is uh, scale the depth x and depth y, or the joints, to the camera. So let's see. We'll make it scale to the side of the width and to the height of the canvas. And so now, there we go. Now we've got Schiffman <laughs> dancing on screen. Amazing, right? Great. <laughs> so that's Connectron in a nutshell. It's just these couple of lines of code and you have access to all of the data on the Connect. So I guess that's it. Awesome. Cool. Thank you so much, Lisa, for that wonderful tutorial about Connectron and the Microsoft uh, Connect 2, which is the one that you should get if you want to try to run this software. Um, if you're interested in more, the Connectron website has a lot of documentation, more examples that you can see here for P5.js. There are also some 3.js uh, examples that work with the, the 3D library for JavaScript 3.js that you can find linked to in this video's description. So again, if you're interested in contributing, if you have some thoughts or ideas about what other 3D depth sensors might be good for Lisa to look into or research to keep the development of the Connectron going. Uh, feel free to write those in the comments and I'll see you in a future video. Goodbye.